Hi everybody, um, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we're going to kind of walk through this dashboard that I've already built. Um, a lot of building a dashboard is dragging and dropping and lining things up. And you do not need to watch anybody drag, drop, and line things up. Um, as you saw during the restaurant tutorial, the way that you make a dashboard um, is you come down here to the, um, the squares divided into four squares, um, click on that, and that will give you a brand new empty dashboard. Um, and then you go ahead and drag each visualization over um, and drag them around. A couple of things I did with this dashboard that are just like the setup type of things. Um, I chose floating down here, uh, which is really nice because you can resize your um, your visuals and um, put them in different proportions, move them around wherever you want. When you choose tiled, it forces everything into basically a grid. Um, so your visualizations have to line up into an imaginary grid with each other. Um, because I have visualizations of like very different sizes and I wanted to put a few different text boxes in, I chose floating over here. So if you're finding that Tableau is not doing quite what you want it to and you want more control, choose floating. Okay, so the first thing um, I want to point out about this dashboard and about this data set is that as we were going through this data set, we were really telling two stories. Um, the first story that we were telling was about the overall picture. Um, what's the general trends in all of the names since 1900? Um, and that's very different from the story of a single name, you know? So once we drill down and we're like, oh, what has happened with this one particular or these three particular names over time? Those are two very different stories. Um, and Tableau lets you break those up into different dashboards really, really easily. So I've broken this kind of overall picture about, you know, gender and the prevalence of names um, into this one dashboard and just a like deep drill down into one particular name into this other dashboard. We're going to start on this first dashboard because it's a little bit simpler. Um, and this story really emerged as I was going through the data set. Um, as you know, this is not the first time that I've gone through this data set um, or worked with it. And honestly, each time I've found a very different story. Um, and this year, going through it, what I found was that um, the male and female names are disproportionately gendered. Um, and what I mean by that is actually what I wrote as the big takeaway down here. Um, that the most popular names are also the most gendered names. And there's a really sharp decline in popularity um, after you get away from these polls. So, you know, we have these extremely popular um, only male names, and then they kind of fall off. You know, we have a couple that can be assigned to females um, that are still fairly popular, approximately as popular as Aaron. Um, but over time, the names that are more towards the middle are disproportionately less popular than the names that are here at the polls. Um, so I've kind of constructed this visual, this dashboard around that insight. Um, and that insight comes from this visual, and that's why I've put it over here in the upper left corner. Um, the very upper left, I gave it a short name, 100 years of first names. Um, obviously, this dashboard could use a little bit more styling and a little bit more love, but for the time be being, this illustrates the general principles. Um, this title is in a not the default font, obviously. Um, I've chosen a serif font 
serif meaning that there's little like feet at the ends of the letters rather than a sans serif which is what most of the all of the narrative is in um, the sans serif i did not choose it's just the default the way that i got these text boxes both the title and the callouts is with this text box you just drag Type, you click on drag, or you click on text and drag it over. Right, so I chose this serif font um, and called it 100 Years of First Names because it's short, it's catchy, um, it's quickly easy to understand. And then gave a little bit of context, so just enough for the reader to know what we're looking at, um, what we're going to be talking about, and to ground themselves in where this data comes from. Um, even though it's not the full citation, right? And then the next thing, they can either go here or they can go here. Um, they're kind of equally prioritized. Many people will go here because this is kind of a different type of visualization that you don't typically see. Um, and this really does tell the dominant story. Now, um, both the baby, baby girl names and baby boy names are intrinsically related to the gender ratio and prevalence. Um, and I've decided obviously to put the pink one up here and the blue one down here because um, it lines up with these choices, right? And here we already said that this story is about gender and being disproportionate. So over here we've put a call out saying, you know, Mary has been disproportionately more popular than any other female name, um, even than the five similar names afterwards, right? And that's really the biggest story coming out of here. Um, that, yeah, this is the biggest story that you can tell from here. Down here in the baby boys, what we see is that there's actually three that are similarly popular. There's 4.7 million, 4.7 million, and 4.6 million. Um, and then we get down to, you know, under 4 million. So these three are really um, disproportionately popular, right? So laying these all out together, it tells one story about the overall picture um, of this data set. What my plan is, is to use this um, excellent feature, excellent and relatively new feature of Tableau, is to put these together into a story. All right. So I'm intending to put another visualization into this data set. I've already given some context up here about what this um, entire project is going to be about. So I don't necessarily need to put in my citation because I can put it in on the, on the other dashboard. All right, so let's move on to the second dashboard where we drill down and tell one story about one name. Um, so, in preparing this particular dashboard, I did a little bit of field research, we'll say. Um, I gave a couple of people this set of visualizations and took note about which ones that they gravitated towards the most. Um, and what almost everybody wanted to be able to do was to compare their name with other people's names. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I was like, or for the purposes of this project, I was like, okay, so then I'm going to give the option, the ability to see uh, your name um, and all of its variants in comparison to the most common or the most popular names. Like, how frequent is this name compared to the most common, um, the most common name? All right, and I've called this a closer look at baby names since 1900 um, and asked this prompt up here. So given similar context, um, but this time rather than saying, here's the overview, um, this time inviting the user to ask questions about themselves and about the names of people around them. Um, we have a search bar here. I didn't do any formatting to the search bar. You can do lots of formatting should you want to um, there. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So obviously I just pulled in the bar chart and the line chart, um, but then I made two more. And we're gonna go and take a look at those in just a second. But first I want us to talk about um, how we got one particular name. 
So as you'll see here, you can type another name um, such as, uh, I don't even know, Shalane. Right, and we look for Shalane, um, and we see it's almost exclusively a female name. Um, 54 females were, were named Shalane in 1986. Um, and it had this popular rise, right? And compared to other uh, similar, <laughs> compared to the most common names, it's almost non-existent, right? Okay, so this search box here is dynamic and it affects all three of these panes. It affects this um, stacked bar chart, it affects this line chart, and it affects this um, regular bar chart, right? Let's take a look at how that works. So this is built up in the line, um, the line chart over here. Um, and the way that you do this is that, um, is that you come to the drop-down box here in the data window. So we're looking at our data window, come to the drop-down box, and we're looking for create parameter. Um, so we are going to create a parameter. I've called my parameter search name. And the data type is a string because I want someone to be able to type a word into it. And I've given a default value of Devin um, because it's an interesting name, right? Um, and then I click OK. And this gives me this um, parameter down here. Then the search name appears down here. And then from here, click on the um, down arrow and select Show Parameter Control. And what that does is it gives this um, search box over here that um, allows you to control it, right? So you only want to do show parameter control on one of your um, visualizations. You don't want to do it on both. All right, and then once you have your parameter set up, then you can create a calculated field based on your parameter. All right. So we are going to click up here, um, again in the data pane on the drop down menu, um, and select Create Calculated Field. I'm going to call this Calc, and I'm going to call it Dynamic Name, um, so that I know that this name in particular is coming from um, the user. All right. And in the formula window here, we are going to type Contains, and then we're going to pass it Name and then search name. And what this says is, uh, contains. What this says is the search name, if it's in the name, then return true. Um, so if the, if <laughs> when you type in Kelly, um, you'll get back Kellyanne, Kelly Sue, Kelly Joe, um, because the search name is in the list of names. Um, if you want to have an exact match, what you'd write would be um, uh, name equals search name. All right. I've actually created both here um, so that I can show you the difference in a few minutes. All right. So once you have created your calculated field, um, then drag your calc dynamic name over to your filters. And from here, you want to only select true. Um, so what this is going to do is this is going to filter based on the parameter and you've shown the interaction for the parameter. All right, so once you select true, click apply and then okay. And then you'll come over to the bar chart that you made before, um, and you'll go ahead and drag the calc dynamic name over to the filters and only select the true. All right. Um, now we have a few more bars over here in our dashboard. Um, so this has given us Maria by gender. It's given us 100 years of Maria. Um, but this doesn't give us this uh, visualization here. Now, um, this top three male and female names, all I did was I went and I created another static bar chart. Um, this is just a really plain static bar chart. Um, I formatted the tooltip a little bit. I uh, sorted them, 
highest to lowest. These are actually not the top six names, um, but they are the top three female and the top three male names. Um, and, you know, did things like selected the color to make sure that it matches the overall theme, um, things like that. If you've changed the font for your titles, uh, you probably want to change the font here um, just to make sure that it matches all the titles of the graphs in your project. All right, so then I'll go back to this dashboard and I just, all I did was I, you know, pulled this over here and placed it here. This one on the bottom is actually a completely different visualization. And the way that I got them to come together um, to make sure that they looked somehow similar is I did a little bit of a trick um, by removing the axis labels on the first one and only placing them on the second one. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the static bar chart here. And all that I did to remove the um, axis labels was I clicked edit axis. And then um, I removed the tick marks. I said none. I uh, clicked here and I selected format and then I removed every single line. So these lines are actually all of the vertical and horizontal lines that you have. And just go through and select all of these to be none um, for your rows and your columns. Okay. To make sure that you have the least amount of grid lines possible um, for this uh, for this image. All right. So we have our static visualization with all of our axis labels and these types of things, you know, formatted away. Um, so now we're going to go and make that interactive bar graph. So um, it's just a plain normal bar graph. First thing that you want to do is pull over your calc dynamic name. Um, so this is the dynamic name that we created that has contains name comma search name. Now, this is a lot of Maria's, right? And we don't necessarily always want to show this many Maria's. Maybe we wanted to only show the exact match. If that's the case, then I can drag my dynamic name to over here, the one that said name equals search name. Click apply, click OK. And then um, I have my Maria here. Now, little trick. So keep this calc dynamic name true. The reason being that um, you already have have this linked to the other um, sheets. So you'll have one search box and that one search box will automatically link via calc dynamic name. Now, if you add a second one, all you've done is you've filtered those Maria's down to one name. Um, then make sure to drag your sum occurrences to your columns and your name to your rows. If you don't drag, drag name to rows, you get like some weird formatting here that's really like very hard to get rid of. So the trick is to drag name to the rows. Okay. The reason this only matters for the bar chart and not for the line chart um, is that the line chart and the 100% bar chart are taking the first exact match. This bar chart is taking all of the matches. Um, and that's what creates this like long, long list. Whereas with the line chart, it's just taking the first match. Um, so that's a quick little trick right there. Um, excellent. So once you have this new line chart, go ahead and remove all the same formatting except for this axis. Um, you do want to format it to remove some of the tick marks that are unnecessary, but you don't actually want to remove the axis. So here you want to keep the axis. The only thing that I'm going to say is to put them onto the same scale, make this one start at zero and go to 50 million, um, and then do the same thing for the static bar chart. Click on your axis here, go edit axis, where the static bar chart, make it fixed and go from zero 
to, oh, this goes up to 5 million. I'm so glad I'm looking at this because um, we'll go back here and this should only go up to 5 million. I'm like, oh, Maria, that's kind of surprising for Maria. Zero to 5 million, not 50 million. Um, we need one more zero. All right, that is going to make this visualization make so much more sense. So zero to five million, not 50 million. All right, um, now we can come back to our dashboard. We can drag this static bar chart that we created and then put right underneath it the other bar chart that you just created to see how Maria compares to all of these other names. All right. Um, you're probably going to have to move around your search bar and all of the things like that, but that should be no problem. The last thing is make sure that you put your citation down here in the lower right hand corner um, because we, you know, didn't do that already. Um, we didn't do it on the first visualization. We do have another piece of um, space here and we could either A, put some information about general naming trends um, B, we could add one of our, our dispersion plot or our um, name chart or something along these lines. Um, C, we could make another visualization showing um, the variations of each name, um, possibly doing a word chart or a word cloud or something like that. But I will leave that up to you to um, go ahead and consider. You have quite a few Tableau dashboards to look at and to get inspiration if you do want to add something there. Um, it is by no means required that you add something into this space. It's just that you do have some space here available um, in case you want to do something with it. All right. Um, the last thing that we are going to do is we are going to put these together into a story. Now, making stories is so easy. You probably have a blank workbook here rather than um, a filled out one. I'm going to make a new story point. Your blank workbook probably looks like this. All you have to do is drag your dashboard on. Um, it fills it out. Add a caption. Um, I have just said, you know, start here by exploring trends. And then, so you can use these captions to either A, tell the story, if you just want to use a bunch of visualizations and not a bunch of dashboards, or B, um, you can tell your users what to do. Again, this is really up to you and your design decisions, but that's kind of the two um, best ways that I've seen these stories done, is the first, it like tells the reader how to interpret each visualization, and the second way is what I've done here, which is to give the reader instructions about how to interact um, with your overall story. All right, and that's it. Um, obviously, I've done a lot of formatting of like the tool tips and things like that. Some more needs to be done um, in order to give this kind of a cohesive, coherent feel. Um, oh, last thing. You might be wondering how um, did we get the word female rather than F? um in this name let's go and work on that let's go take a look at our um, bar charts first um because there's a problem here so we are going to do two things the first thing we're going to do is we are going to add maria or whatever name has been selected into this tooltip. The second thing that we're going to do is figure out how to make this stop showing just an F and start showing female. All right, so here I'm going to insert, and um, this is right in front of my S for what I wanted to say is, you know, 95% of Maria's have been female. I have my 95% here, my of, if I insert, my parameter search name. Um, and then that will give me Maria. Um, have been, and this will say F for you. Okay. So we've figured out our Maria's. Um, there's a little bit of a problem here. We just need to 
change the font size so they're the same. All right, so we figured out how to have Maria, but yours probably still says female. Okay, so we are going to go and create an alias. To do this, you go all of the way back to the data source. And here in the data source in sex, um, select alias from the uh, drop down here. And um, I'll clear my aliases. In order to have uh, F become female, you type, you click on the F and then make it type female. To have M become male, you click on the M and say male. And then you should have over here, 98% um, of Maria's have been female. All right, that is finally it. Um, go ahead, play around, clean things up, and whenever you are ready to publish it to the Tableau public, go ahead and put it up there and then send me the link to your story. Great. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.